Hey, Shalom, Akiyam, Shalom, Kahalo, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rechah, Havadash, on the same double honors of the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Um, this is Brother Aliyala. Same peace and love and salutations to all you brothers out there pushing. I just wanted to do this quick lesson, um, you know, out there at camp. You know, uh, Elder Yashawam, and a few of the brothers have highlighted it, but I was going to chime in real quick. Um, when you go out to the spot that we uh, preach at, you, they, they put up this little plaque and uh now it's a fixture and people come and take pictures of it and i guess they read it and kind of get a little bit of history of maine and Ackert. that and that's right where we preach at and um it's funny how they put it right there where we preach and you know we've been a fixture in dallas for the last you know 15 years now so they know very very well that we're there, you know. There's been times when we've been in uh, in the police department, and they were like, "Yeah, we know you guys. We know you guys very well." And they let us know that they are very aware of, of, of us there and who we are. And I felt like this was just another part of their arrogancy, of their pride, and how they boast in what they've done in, in a way. You know, you will figure that they will be shamed of the history. And, but really, they, you know, they boast in it. They're like, yeah, nigga, whatever. America's better for it, in their opinion. So I want to read this and kind of just go a little over scriptures because we're in a time of redemption. Where we are in a time of payback. And that payback is coming. So, you know what, that, that actually that's the scripture that I will start out with. How about that? Let's go to that real quick. Here in the book of Second Thessalonians, when you go to the first chapter and you read down to the at the sixth verse, it says, See, seeing it is a righteous thing with the most high to recompense or pay back tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Yahweh shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not the most high and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach right who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power okay and this is what's getting ready to happen Okay, and you know, people say, Oh, you know, I wasn't there back then. Well, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna pay for that. You're still gonna pay for that. When you know we read this scripture here in Isaiah the fourteenth chapter, and we read it also we also go to the scripture in Revelation. And I think that's one you know, that's probably gonna be a weekly highlight because leading up into this. But it's like you Edomites here in America and around the West don't get it. You're not going to get away from what your forefathers did. This this whole system that you benefited from, from the slaughter and murder of the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Americans, you're going to pay for that. You're going to pay for it. You know, I saw this one um, um, clip that one of the brothers had sent in. Of the, I, I, I want to say it was the Young Turks. And the, basically, they were just going in on the history of America. If I can find a clip, I'll add it, you know. He, he, was, he was going in, man. Tired of the BS, man. It says here in Isaiah 14, 21, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. All right? So, so slaughter is going to be prepared for the iniquity of your fathers, man. The big payback is coming. The big payback is here. <laughs> and this is why we see global pandemics we're seeing we're seeing a, a global supply chain crisis that that, that has the, the opportunity to set up famine we see ra ra rampant inflation the, the, you know and the money system basically decoupling we're seeing isolated regional warfare you know all of this is happening man right revelation 13 and 9 says if any man have an ear let him hear he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints, man. The patience and the faith of the saints. Just like when you go back to 2 Thessalonians 1 and you skip down to the uh, 
10th verse, it says, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. So when that Lord is coming back and setting the record straight, when those that led in captivity are taken into captivity, when those that kill or then kill by the sword, those that kill with the sword or then kill by the sword, that's going to be upon the Lord's return, man. And the saints are going to be there patiently waiting and glorifying the Lord whenever this goes down. So all the pride and the arrogancy, the rape, robbery, and murder that established this place is going to be paid back within this place. Hardcore. Now, going back to, and I'm going to read this. It says, the lynching of Alan Brooks. On March 3rd, 1910, a 59-year-old black handyman named Alan Brooks was lynched by a white mob at this intersection. Mr. Brooks was accused without evidence, all right, just, just false ac accusations, right, of assaulting his white employer's daughter. During a pretrial hearing for Mr. Brooks at the Dallas County Courthouse, now the old red courthouse, you know, the outside of where Kennedy got his head blown off, a mob of at least 3,000 white men 3,000 white men gathered at the courthouse demanding that Mr. Brooks be lynched. <laughs> Members of the mob broke into the courtroom, seized Mr. Brooks from law enforcement officers. See, how you gonna just come see somebody? All right? That lets you know that the law was in on it. Police department was in on it. They didn't care. Tied a rope around his neck and threw him from the second floor window of the courthouse, fracturing his skull upon impact, a separate faction of the mob surrounded Mr. Brooks, kicking and beating him before dragging him several blocks to this intersection of Maine and Ackert, exactly the place where we preached. And it's all spiritual, man. And Elder Yashua likes to mention how spiritually we probably was, we was there, you know, we was there. He was like, you know, uh, Eliasha Wamba likes to make the point of maybe one of us was this Mr. Brooks coming back and preaching, you know. It says, the brutal, lawless violence continued near the Elks Arch where Mr. Brooks was hanged from the telegraph pole in front of 5,000, 5,000 onlookers, right? This is how bloodthirsty these people are. 5,000 people showed up just to look at a dead body hang, right? Photographs of Mr. Brooks' lynched body were widely circulated, meaning they sent them all out like, ooh, look at this, right? And attendees took pieces of his clothing as souvenirs, and they would take pieces, not of just his clothing, they would take pieces of his body. Though several members of the mob gave newspaper interviews, no one was ever held responsible for the lynching of Alan Brooks. But hey, they're not getting away with it. They're not getting away with it. Scripture says that they're not going to get away with it, man. And they, 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 they think, man, these children that have come, those 5,000 people that was out there, all of them, most of them probably had kids, and they had kids, kids, and they here today. A lot of those people, the children of those gut people that are out there, a lot of them are probably still alive. Children that were born in the 30s and the 40s. Okay. A lot of them grandparents was there at Maine and Acker. Maine and Acker, they were there. Sitting around the porch right now. Talking shit. All right, acting like they ain't had nothing to do with it. You was out there jumping, skipping rope while Mr. Brooks was being burned, tortured, playing hopscotch, eating apple pie and shit. Most high is gonna pay back all of you Edomites, man. Zechariah eleven and five says, "Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty, and they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich." And their own shepherds pity them not, man. Payback and retribution is going to come for the perpetual hatred that you so-called white people have had for the Negro, Latino, and Native American here. 
you're going to you're going to be paid back man but if she's walking I, in the I would not want to see her walking on the sidewalk in front of my home wearing that ugly suit yeah man so you know um you know you 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 read this you read this about the lynching of Alan Brooks and just the way it went down and the energy and uh and in the, the 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 mindset that Esau has to you know put this on this corner right where we preach and and just his overall pride and what's happening is that people are identifying the real problem in the earth and the real problem in the earth is you Edomites you Edomites have ransacked the whole earth pillage and then you even want the uh, uh outer space and it's becoming more and more evident that you're the problem you know but one of the brothers the brother uh gms uh whitestone ford put posted this a couple days ago and uh you know the guy he, he the spirit jumped Dude. on him. and if she doesn't have a pedicure i mean she looks like a savage now you don't want to turn her into a victim look guys we don't want any of that we don't want any of that. We don't want lawlessness. We don't want chaos. But we're tired we're of- there. We're there. We're, we're tired of right-wing terrorism that has been done in this country for centuries. Look, I don't want to- it, it ain't white wing, white wing terrorism. It's terrorism of the Edomites in general. Because the Democrats are just as bloody as, as, as the Republicans. All of them are demons. Hillary Clinton and Biden and all the rest of the demons on the Democratic side, they, they're they down for the death of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans just as much as white wing, wingers are. They're, when they attack black people after they've been murdered, when they did absolutely nothing wrong, you're pushing us to the limit. And what do I mean by that? You're asking us to talk about history, the history of the South. This is in Georgia. What, it, what happened in Georgia? There were savages in Georgia. It was the ancestors of the white right wingers. They were absolute savages. They murdered people, they lynched people, they raped people, they enslaved people. Lynches? They took babies from their mothers and sold them as property. You wanna talk about savages? Your ancestors were the biggest savages the world has ever seen. And so don't, don't you dare, don't you dare call a black man a savage after you murdered him. Don't you dare do that. I'm so sick of African Americans being called violent when the world's worst violence was done to them, not by them, to them, not by them. For God's sake, you want to do racist stereotypes if it fit anywhere and it doesn't. But if it any, fit anywhere, it would certainly fit white right wingers in the South who has hundreds of years of history of being savages, savages. They snatched babies and they sold them as property and they raped their mothers, savages. That's what they were. You wanna talk about stereotypes? Screw all of you who still defend that confederacy, that monstrosity. Anyone who defends that is a barbaric savage. That's why they don't want to teach uh, American history in public schools. That's why there's been a, a, a strong orchestrated effort to prevent the teaching of anything that you just mentioned right now. Because, hey, God forbid that, you know, children learn about the real savages in this country's history, right? Let's go ahead and dehumanize people over their toenails, uh, but let's also erase the part of our history that, yes, is dark, that's awful, but is the truth. Alf. And they did this for hundreds of years. In a lynching, they not only hung the person, they burned the person, and then they cut off their genitalia. And in the midst of doing all this, I swear to God, you could look it up in the history books. They had a picnic around the body. Yeah. And then they would. We read, we reading about it. And they posting it. They posting it. They they bragging about it. Low key, it's a landmark. You know. 5,000 of you Edomites came to celebrate the killing of Alan Brooks. And that's just one. That's just one little blip on just the laundry list of things. And that's not just happening back then. It's still happening to this day. To this day, man. It ain't stopped. Take home pieces of the charred body for memorabilia. They would have the kids, their kids, go pick pieces of the body off. And then after they did all of that, they had the temerity to call black people violent. 
no, no more, no more. You don't ever get to call a black person violent. You don't ever get to do that. So if you're a white right winger in the South, don't cry about, oh no, my beloved ancestors. Your ancestors were not beloved. They weren't, they were monsters. So I said it because it's true. How you react to that is up to you. You can say, hey, that was terrible. They shouldn't have done that. Let's get better. Or you can say, I kind of love that history. That proves you are just as racist. You just don't. And they do love that history. And they want it to be perpetuated because they want to keep the, uh, their hold in America. And they believe that you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are a threat. And they treat you like a threat because they know it's, it's bigger than skin color. It's bigger than skin color. It's about it's about blood right. It's about birthright. And there's a legacy that comes along with you, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, that that goes to 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 rule in the world. And they want to keep that suppressed. This is why they've had a perpetual hatred. When you go to the Book of Ezekiel 35 and five, it says, "Because thou has had a perpetual hatred." It's talking about the Edomites. When Really, when you read this, it says a prophecy against Mount Seir. Mount Seir is where Esau dwell. You so-called white people are the are, are Edomites. You come from you come from your forefather Esau. And when these scriptures talk about the the downfall of Edom and his children, his legacy, the bulk of you so-called white people are included in that. That's who you are. That's your legacy. All right. Ezekiel thirty-five and five says. Let me start at three. And I and I say unto it, thus saith the Lord power, behold, O Mount Seir, I'm against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate, and I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. And, and you haven't hated blood. You've laid up monuments to these demons that have been killing the whole time. And that you've carved their faces into the size of mountains and told everybody that these are our forefathers and we love them and we cherish them. And they were good men. When in fact, they were full of hate, rape, robbery, and murder. Okay? That's why it says in the book of Ob Obadiah, in the 12th verse, it says, But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in their distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people. In the day of their calamity, yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of, of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. And so it was just, it was, it, hey, and this has been going on since Babylon, man. Even before Babylon, Esau has been looking to destroy the nation of Israel perpetually. It has never stopped. And that's why blood is going to pursue this place. Isaiah 13 and 11 says, And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And this America is the height of pride and arrogancy. They truly don't, you know, the, the typical American does not see judgment coming for all the bloodshed that happened but we're telling you right now just like the scriptures i read before that that bloodshed is pretty much promised it's pretty much promised man okay when you read here in the book of baruch the fourth chapter we read this on the highways and byways but i'm gonna read it again uh baruch 4 and 30 says take a good heart O jerusalem for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee OK, uh, it says miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoiced at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall 
uh, she be grieved for her own desolation. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the Most High. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of the Most High. So retribution is coming for the elect of the so-called, of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you scattered Israelites, okay? You Israelites that have been scattered across the four corners of the earth that are waking up to this word, receiving through the Spirit the truth, and confessing the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai out into the world as the premier power on the earth, in, in the universe. Those of you elect will see retribution, will see payback, will see recompense of this proud, arrogant, hypocritical nation that has ruled with lies, usury, bloodshed, that, that, that put up plaques to declare their deeds proudly. And all these people, like I said at the end of, uh, of this, no one was ever held responsible for, for the lynching of Alan Brooks. But it's not been forgotten. They think that they got away with the way that they acquired America, so-called America. They did not get away. This will be the most epic downfall of the empire in the history of the world because it's going to go out with great destruction, fire. But before that, the beginning of sorrows are going to touch this place tremendously. You're going to see famine. You're going to see men, men killing each other, man, ransacking each other. Distress of the, the people is going to be just all over the place. It's going to be all hell before the ultimate burning of this place, man. And that's the only way that this place is going to be cleansed by by fire, okay? So, you know, I just want to touch in on that, man. Lord willing, it was somewhat edifying for whoever uh, catches this, man. Call hello, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashem, Kadash. Double honors once again to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you. I came out there pushing words into you, man. Truth, shout